this. We prepare our hearts. He will do that here. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight a path for him. For when he comes, mighty things be. Yesterday, today, and forever the same.
yesterday, today, and forever. I don't have a dramatic testimony. I became a Christian when I was six years old, and I've grown in the church. I have learned, I have studied, and I have come to know him better. And as I have, I have come to know that the promises he gives us in the scripture are true and that he is just as real today as he was in those days. And so tonight, my credentials for being here are not who I've sung with or what I've sung on or what I can do or what I can't do or whether you like my tracks or not, but they are just this, that I know the Lord and that I can say with all my heart that I love him and that I want to proclaim his glory. And so before we go any further, I would share my testimony, and this is it. Talk about a child that do love Jesus. Here's one, here's one. Talk about a child that do love Jesus. Here's one, here's one. Ever about a child that do love Jesus. Here's one, here's one. Talk about a child that's been converted. Well, here's one, here's one. Talk about a child that's been So many of us have grown up with you. Sometimes we take you for granted. But tonight, Lord, please, let us see you anew. Know that in our hearts, we love you and we praise you. Amen. Tell me the story of Jesus.
So tonight, if you're in a place where there are questions, we are a people who need to have answers. But we're not called as Christians to be people who walk by sight, but by what? By faith. And faith is the evidence of things not seen, of answers we do not yet have. And if tonight you are waiting for those answers, remember that in the meantime, when you don't have them, the Christ of the cross is enough to see you through. And sometimes just walking with him is better than knowing all. You have faced a mountain of desperation. You have climbed, you have fought, and you have won. But this valley that lies coldly before you casts a shadow you cannot overcome. And just when you thought you had it all together, oh, you knew every verse to get you through. This time, all oh, the sorrow broke more than just your heart. And reciting all those verses just won't do. That's you, then listen. When answers aren't enough, there is Jesus. And he is more than just an answer. Thank you. 
Amen. When I was a little girl, my favorite scripture was, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If I could dance, if I could glide across the floor in perfect time, if I could spin in graceful circles, you would find I'd dance for you. Lord, I would dance for you. And if I could sing, if I could lift the golden notes up to your ear, if I could send the music out for all. families but they are as different as night and day aren't they they're real different <laughs> you can talk it's okay really but I know they're probably watching see and, and I they want to be careful you what have to be I careful say. oh that's right I forgot they're watching hi mom um, you have to it's okay what you say about your mom but your mother-in-law you have to be careful you know what you say about her um, Sunday night in the church we were in the preacher was reading the scripture uh, that says I've come to set a a father against son and mother in, a daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. See, it's scriptural. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, I, no, tr not truly. I love my mother-in-law, even though she's very different than my mother. And the first year we discovered the difference in our families was at Christmas. Now, I love Christmas, do I not? In fact, the 2 o'clock Thanksgiving dinner is over. It's time to get the tree out and put the Christmas carols on. It is Christmas time. And I'm shopping in August for Christmas. Now, Jackie, do I like to shop? I do like to shop. One thing Jackie and I have in common. Well, honey, wasn't it, wasn't it, um, wasn't it last year at Christmas that we discovered, or that at least that I, I felt like we discovered what your spiritual gift was? My and what? Is? Your spiritual gift. We didn't talk about saying this, Dennis, on this program. <laughs> Well, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you like to know what we no, discovered last Christmas? Like yeah, they're saying amen, especially the front row, and they're important. So, 
Last year he came home and he said that he thought my spiritual gift was, I have the gift of shopping. <laughs> and I tend to exercise it freely. <laughs> I mean, I think a woman's place is in the mall, don't you? <laughs> We're in trouble, huh, man? Oh, but Dennis told me he thought if we got T-shirts and put them on our record tables, we could sell more than anything else T-shirts that say, shop till you drop. <laughs> okay? We're in trouble. So I'm out there exercising my spiritual gift about August. And by the time it gets to be December and it's time to go home, then I have a van load of Christmas presents. For both our families live in Texas. Dennis's family in San Antonio and mine in Dallas. So we have to go home every year. And uh, we have to go both places. So Christmas Eve morning, we get up and we load up our van and our two-year-old with all our Christmas presents and all our luggage. And uh, this year, we had to have a U-Haul to get it all home, <laughs> plus our van, okay? Because we got electric trains and all kinds of things this year. And, um, and so we, we drive to Dallas on Christmas Eve. It's about 11 and a half hours. And as my preacher says, that'll bless you. <laughs> and then... We get home, and it's about dinner time. Now, in my family on Christmas Eve, what you do is we go out to dinner to eat Chinese food. I don't know why. It's just a tradition that we've established. And we told you we were different, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Okay. We're in Dallas now. We're eating Chinese food. And then we come home, and we, uh, we have a little Christmas Eve service in my family. We read the Christmas car uh, story out of the Bible, and we sing carols. Then we exchange one present. Everybody gets one present from under the tree. And then we watch Bing Crosby and White Christmas. I don't know, but we do. And then we go to bed, and the next morning we get up, and we have Christmas the way you're supposed to have Christmas at our house. My mom gets up, and she appoints one person in charge, and that person gives everybody one present. You go around the circle and open your presents one at a time, and everybody looks at what you got, and you say, oh, I really like that. Thank you. It's just what I wanted. Everybody goes, ooh, that's neat. And then you put your presents in this pile, your ribbons in this pile, and your wrapping paper in this pile. <laughs> Then when you're through going around the circle, the, na the person gives out another round of gifts. You go around again. One at a time, it takes about three hours. It's really great. Then my mother and my, I mean, my grandmother and my aunts and uncles and everybody come over and we do it again. Go around the circle one at a time, last till lunchtime. <laughs> then we have this big lunch that my mother cooked. Then Dennis and Seth and I get in the car with all the rest of our Christmas presents. We drive four more hours to San Antonio. Then we get there. He's tired. Just listen. It's 185 degrees in my mother-in-law's house because Dennis's grandmother Mimo's there, okay? And, um, and so then we get there. There's 95 kids, aunts, uncles, dogs, cats, and they've all been waiting till we, till we get there to open their presents. Yeah, so they're, you know. So we run in. They hug us all at one time. We rush into the living room. There's the Christmas tree. This year there were 15 of us in a two-bedroom house at my mother-in-law's. So we rush in there. This is the way they open their presents at Dennis's house. <laughs> it's all over with in five minutes. Nobody knows what they got. Everything's covered up with wrapping paper and the kids are going, is that all? Is there anything else? <laughs> you brought me out here. What am I out here for? Uh, oh yeah, I am making a point. That is that our, even though our families are so different, they've both given us one thing in common, and that is a great thing that all of us can give our families, and that is to love the Lord and to love His church. And, and as we begin to raise Seth, more and more we appreciate the foundation of faith that they have given us for us to build our home upon. And you know, in Matthew, it says that um, the one who built his house on the rock, remember, and the one who built his house on the sand... And how the storms came and the one built on the rock would stand, but the one built on the sand washed away. And that we are like that man who built his house on the rock when we build our homes upon the foundation of faith that's in the Bible. And I guess that's what's inspired us to work on that musical. Very much so. And we decided that uh, we wanted to sing this song for you because it's from that musical and because it's about building your house on the rock. You can go ahead and start the track. Um, you've probably heard this song, but... It, it ministers to us in a special way because we believe it's, it describes the relationship and the attitude that we should have when we walk the aisle that afternoon or that evening um, to join hands and to join our hearts in a relationship of matrimony. So if you're here tonight and you're with your husband or your wife, we want you to think back to that day and go through with this song with us because we believe it's a strong testimony of the faith. Here we are at the start, committing to each other.
by his word from our hearts. We will be a family in a house that will be a home, and with faith we'll build it. Jesus. 
first place we begin as his witnesses and as his ministers is to recognize our own need and to ask him to be with us, not in the nights like tonight when it's easy to say, we praise you, Lord, and we want to serve you, but to say, I need you on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and all the days that I walk the very daily parts of life. Oh, how I pray that he would be in me in those moments when I touch the least of these. We can't do it on our own. We need his grace when we falter. We need his love in order that we might show love to others. We need his hope so that we might walk through the valley. We need his strength. We need his wisdom. And oh, how we need to learn more of him. I wish that you would pray with me that God would teach us as ministers and as witnesses more and more about him so that we might be lights in a world of darkness and that he might be walking right with us. We need the Lord. We need to know his grace to seek his holy face above the world's acclaim. Father, in this moment as we come to you and we pray to you, 
We know that you already know what we need. We know that you already know the things that are on our hearts and our minds, the things that weigh us down, the questions that we have. And yet, we need to bring them to you. And in this moment as we pray, we offer them up to you. And we ask you to be with us in the daily things of life. And would you pray this prayer with me tonight? I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can be so Spirit through the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give a new name, the name of the city of God, the new Jerusalem coming down out of the, out of the heavens from the Father. And to him who overcomes, I will write my name upon his heart, and he shall be with me, and I shall be his God. Even so, Lord Jesus, we pray, come quickly. Last night while I lay sleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing and there.
feet to 